Greg, anything new on, on Dylan, or is it? No, Dylan should be good. Uh, he didn't skate today, but uh, he got through yesterday well, and yeah, he'll be available for us tomorrow. Uh, is everybody else? Uh, is there anybody else who's, who's not available for tomorrow? No, uh, Fabs will reevaluate. Um, you know, he just he simply hasn't played for a month. He's going through and again. Rehab and training is a lot different. Uh, so uh, we'll see if we want to put him th through the game on Thursday. If not, make him a little more time. So he'd be the one probably evaluate um, into tomorrow. I think James was already scheduled to start yep, tomorrow. Yeah, James, right James scheduled you, to start tomorrow. Are you, is it, uh, is Vila going to back up? You had talked at some point about maybe using That's Alex. That's a great question because you, you literally could have been in our coach's room this morning. Uh, again, we, we, it's real when I talk about wanting to get Alex in and part of the process. Um, again, I think James' play has uh, made that hard on us. Um, but at the same time, you know, the bottom line is you look at our goaltending as a whole, we are almost at the bottom of the entire league in all st statistical categories. With that said, full confidence in Philly. I love how he's battling, he's winning hockey. Um, we're still in the midst of evaluating uh, Alex and wanting to get him in. Obviously a little complicated with two games before the Europe trip, but yes, it's, it's in discussion. We probably haven't come out with a final plan yet. The only thing <coughs> is final is James will be playing tomorrow. And we'll probably reevaluate after that. Will you consider giving Vila, because you gave James the day off, like not even having Vila back up, or, or is he going to back up tomorrow? Yes, yeah, so again, we'll consider that what's best for getting uh, Alex in the rotation. That last time, it wasn't giving James the day off prior to a start. It was more about getting Alex into our rhythm a little bit, and, and I think it helped. It's been a while since you scored a goal in the first period. Yes. What, what's like. What needs to happen? What's we need to simplify there? our game. I know Helene asked last night, and it's real. We just, I mean, the analytics on, I mean, just a simple goal for goals against. Um, and it's been tough to read because if you look at, I mean, let's take our last handful of games. New York Islanders, great first period, came out zero goals. Boston the other night, great first period, find ourselves down 2-1. Obviously, we did find a goal there. The Florida and the Rangers game were very similar in that we didn't give up a ton, but they got to the simple game like we wanted to. And what do I mean by that? They just got pucks north, they established a four check, they got pucks on net, and then they created races. Like, you get out of that game last night, we're down one nothing. but if you look at the underlying numbers, I know the shots were whatever, 12-1, whatever, 12-3, 12-4, you know what it was. But we had even chances. You know, Sports Logic had it one chance to zero for the Rangers, and the one chance went in, it probably wasn't a chance. It was outside the dots, just above the goal line. So you're frustrated in that we're not getting results, but there's something real about what the Rangers did last night. They got a ton of zone time with creating rebounds, slicing everything on net. They made us defend. Um, they won that period on the scoreboard, but they won that period territorially. So I think we have to do similar in our next approach, and it'll be our goal, and now it's up to our guys to execute it. I'm curious, with following up on pulling a goalie or, or not doing so, like what goes into it, ju not just specifically to last night, I mean, and, and how much do you weigh, like, you know, maybe leaving him in as a message to the yeah. rest of the team that it's partly on them, on the skaters as it wasn't, well. It like wasn't, we talked about it thoroughly after the second. Obviously, you've been around the game enough. You probably had a feel for, I'm sure we were contemplating it. And, um, you know, I probably was leaning towards pulling Ville because I felt we might leave him out to dry in the third because it felt like that was happening towards the end of the second. And I give Alex Westland credit you know ultimately it's my decision and on me but he felt Villy's game was coming in order towards the end it's the most volume he made some saves he just felt he was getting his game in order and he thought it was important for him in the big picture to go out for the third and I trusted him and he was he was right um, Villy was fine good in the third and obviously we played a much better game so there's a lot that goes into it you're talking the media uh, but you're also talking big picture. So worked out last night, and then we're still going to reevaluate the whole goalie big picture uh, 
I don't think you've, you've done it much here in Detroit. Have Haven't, you I don't like it. I, so like, and you, it's, I think it's a different feel, different time. One, I don't. We haven't put ourselves in that position a lot, despite being who we have been the last year and a half, um, despite being outmanned a lot of these type of games. Our guys have competed pretty hard. We haven't been in those situations. And, you know, I came from an organization where Vassy refused to be pulled, and that's, that's the individual. And it was real, and it was it was it worked. Um, so it, it's again. It, there's some times we will, and I don't want to ever leave a goalie in a bad situation or leave him out to dry. Uh, we just haven't been in that situation a lot. And that's credit to our guys. But last night it felt like we were heading there. Uh, and again, credit to our guys in the third. We actually pushed back. Just one more with Alex. Not, round would not be a good time to send him to GR anyway on a conditioning stint, right? Because I don't Sweden. think so. The uniqueness, and even in Sweden, you want three goalies. He'd You're probably right. get a lot of quality work, even if he doesn't get game time. Uh, just the way that we don't get much practice time, and we're going every other right now. As, as tough as that travel is, we're going to get two full practices in Sweden uh, before we play. So, um, no, uh, I think we'd be more apt to uh, in the immediate. Week to two, we'd be more apt to play him here than for a conditioning stint. But again, it's something we'll reevaluate after tomorrow night. What, if anything, was done differently in that third period to be able to produce those goals that wasn't done in the? And first I think simple period. game, and I think what I just talked about came from that RAS line. Um, the shift that I felt they turned it a little bit was just an ozone puck on the net, four check. They retrieved the puck. <laughs> D-man got the puck to net. RAS picked up a rebound. Uh, Klim took the goalie's eyes, it's in the back of the net. And then we kept them out there because they had a proper shift and then they scored again immediately. So I think just what we talked about, maybe stars, those, a little credit to those guys. It obviously got us going and we had, had, you know, had some chances and some looks there. So um, again, appreciate the third period. I asked the guys to build their game. Uh, Knowing, you know, being down five nothing, the game was probably lost, and they did that. Um, so hopefully, it can uh, lead into tomorrow night. Looking ahead to tomorrow, I think it was maybe a little bit of a surprise when Martin Saint-Louis got that job, just because you don't necessarily see a ton of Hall of Fame type players in coaching, and yep. uh, that he didn't have NHL experience before that either. So I'm curious, as a coach, what has impressed you about what he's done with that? A lot has impressed me, uh, Marty. Um, one, he beat me, it was a bunch of 14-year-olds a year ago in Florida. We were head-to-head -head in a triple-A game, uh, so I'm 0 for on that end against them. A couple things, Marty. One, I think there is huge value in being an elite player in coaching. I understand it doesn't translate all the time. I know there's many examples, great players haven't been great coaches, but I do think there's something of playing at an elite level uh, translating to coaching. I see it with Alex Tange. I see it with Bob Luger, 700 games in the league. The one thing, and I won't forget it, is Marty got named head coach, and I was literally sitting next to Steven Stamkos in the locker room. And obviously him and Sam are really good friends. And Stammer's like, he asked me, he's like, what do you think? And I'm like, well, what do you think? He goes, it'll be an adjustment for him. He said he'll, he'll be frustrated with players not be able to do some things. <laughs> that he's able to do, but he said, Marty is so competitive, he'll figure it out. And I think you're seeing that. And I just think you, you see Marty get a year in and time, you know, he's a modern coach in that he's, his relationships are excellent. He's patient with his players. You can see it. Like, I'm not in that room, but you can see how they operate and how he operates. Um, he, he's done a really good job. Um, I, I've been impressed, but in... Being around Tampa and understanding who he was there, I'm not surprised. Just you brought up Sweden. Is, is this a is the trip structured? I guess as well as such an excursion can be with yes. being able to leave Saturday and get 100%. what four days huge, before playing. Huge credit to the league. There's no easy way around it. Of course, our schedule before and after are going to get crunched. There's going to be some spots in our. Schedule, we're going to have to eat it back-to-backs, three and fours, uncomfortable, but they've done a good job. I experienced it when I went with Tampa. They gave you enough time on the front end. Uh, they give you enough time on the back end. Uh, it's very well thought out. It's not perfect. It will never be perfect, but um, 
I don't love being one of the only teams playing back to back there, but at the same time, you get a little more in the back end of it. So extremely well thought out of the league. It's not perfect, but they did a really good job with it. How will you guys handle it on the flip end coming? I know you're flying back that yeah, Saturday, um, right? Yeah, then... again, just trusting our science on yeah. it, and our people in those positions. We got a whole plane on the front end of it. Uh, right when we land, we skate. It's because that's what we're told the body will best acclimate to a certain amount of sleep we're trying to get. Um, we have our sports science team on top of that. And then I'm told on the back end, we'll plan to, but it's much easier. So we'll see. Rebuild, rebuild cannot be forever. There's probably three or four teams in the athletic divisions who are going through a rebuild and hoping to get yep. out of that rebuild. Do you feel a pressure, though, of getting some results? Of right course, now. yeah, absolutely. You're battling with those same type of teams. I understand that. I mean, I just looked at Montreal's roster. They're in a rebuild. I don't know if their roster is much different than ours, player for player. A lot of it's perception. A lot of it is who's been at it longer. Obviously, they were in the Stanley Cup Finals how long ago? Uh, not long ago. Of course, like you're, there's, you're battling internally day in and day out of improving. But like you said, there's these four or five teams in the Atlantic in a similar trajectory, and of course you want to compete and get results. Um, you got to be realistic with the process. Um, you know, even our upfront schedule. You know, we play the Bruins and the Rangers back to back. We go one and one. You know, realistically, are you happy with that? Yes. Does it sting last night? We weren't very competitive for 30 to 35 minutes of it. Yes. Yeah, so I think there's a. Part of it, you have to be realistic, but absolutely, you're battling for results. Uh, and I'm sure if you asked uh, Marty that, you'd say the same thing. To go back to your point about the Rasmussen line, I know there's been a fair amount of rotation with that fourth line, but it seems like whoever it's been has been reasonably effective in that role. Would you attribute that maybe to an example of the value of that like kind of simple game, or what yep. have you seen go right? I think so. I think so. Simple game. Um, and then sometimes, like even last night, I, I would probably like to have Zarnik in the lineup last night because it allows us maybe to elevate some of our centers up, Ras or Villano, uh, but we didn't. So, you know, to get some pushback, we just kept that line and we gave them a lot of playing time, and they did. So, yeah, of course, I think what you expect and what you can get out of your fourth line, successive. I think the offense was great last night, but you're looking for winning shifts, and last night they did that.